Now here's a first for this channel, I've been sent something uh, without buying it. A kind subscriber of mine has sent me this package and uh, I'm going to open it up now. I know what's inside. Uh, this was sent in by a kind gent called Colin, Colin Hickey, and he's got a YouTube channel which I'll link to below and he sent me, wow, well, everything bar one item um, these are well obviously printed circuit boards here and uh, they are for the ESP8266 the ESP01 uh, which is the thing he hasn't sent me but I've got one of those oh there's also a Oh, I'm not sure what that is, I'll have to look that up, but these um, boards, basically, you have a DC to DC converter there. This is one of those really quite small ones, adjustable DC to DC converters. And <clears throat> some MOSFETs and some connectors, that sort of thing, and the DC to DC converter sits there. The ESP01 actually sits over that. And then we've got some MOSFETs. And the idea is that we can web control some LEDs or other 12 volt or actually 5 to 28 volts, it says here. We can PWM and uh, adjust some uh, LEDs, uh, much the same as the 555 LED dimmer that I created. Well, this, of course, is a web-enabled one. Uh, once you get the right code on the ESP8266. And uh, so thank you very much, Colin. I'm going to build one of these up now. I do have an ESP uh, somewhere in a box, and we're going to give it a go. So first things first, I need to solder these pins onto the DC to DC converter. So with the legs uh, soldered onto this little DC to DC converter, um, there's a little arrow here on the PCB and that presumably corresponds with this one, the input and the output. Yep, yeah, that looks right. So that should fit on there if I've soldered the pins in straight. Now it's only taken five minutes to install these, but I just need to put the MOSFETs in. Uh, and this isn't one I've come across before, so I'm gonna look up the data sheet. So here's that MOSFET, the STP36NF06L from ST Microelectronics. Um, the table here, uh, so it's 60 volts up to 30 amps. Um doubt I'll be putting anything like that through it. And the gate threshold voltage is 2.5 volts, so uh, that's okay, isn't it, for the 3.3 volts of the ESP8266. Now, it is worth remembering, these two MOSFETs are quite close together, and these tabs uh, shouldn't touch because they're electrically connected to the drain pin now the concept for this and the design of the PCB as well uh, was done by the gentleman behind this site and the web address is blog.quindorian.org um, and if you search then for ESP8266 you'll soon find this series of blog posts, I think there's about 10 different posts and he's gone through absolutely everything from the original concept here made on a a perf board to producing the PCB and there is a link within here to actually uh, buy those PCBs but he also talks about implementing this with other pieces of software um, so that you can control many of them around your home um, all from a web browser but that's a bit advanced for me at the moment due to the fact that I only have one to play with so I've come up with a slightly different idea 
So what I plan to do is hack this code here, which was created by SparkFun. This actually runs a web server from the ESP8266, a very, very simple one, and allows you to turn on and off an LED connected to a, a GPIO pin. Um, but I'm going to adjust this a little bit. So instead of it just being on or off, I hope to make it 0%, um, 50%, 100%, something like that, uh, just for testing. So that's the next step I need to do now, is edit this code. Now I've grabbed that script and dropped it into the Arduino IDE. Uh, there's a few steps we need to also complete. So in preferences, we need to put this web address in so that we can download the ESP8266 uh, board definitions. So if we click OK there. And then we go into board and board manager and wait for that to sync now with that new uh, source and ESP8266. There we are. And I've already installed this. So we'd normally just click install there. And once it's installed, we're ready to program the ESP. So with the ESP board installed now, I've just made a couple of changes. I've changed the LED pin here to pin 2. And a bit lower down, um, it's reading the URL that was, we're asking of the ESP8266. And then writing or changing the variable val here. And then eventually writing that using analog write. Uh, just below there. So I've got my uh, USB to serial adapter plugged in. We need to look at the board manager and because the spark fun suggests using this one I'm going to use it as well. The ESP8266 thing. And we just need to make sure we've got the right COM port. COM port 4 in this Example now using my board if I press and hold this button that brings GPIO 0 uh, to ground Low and then I can reset the board using this one Release both and that should now be in the mode to program So if I upload the sketch It will need to compile And now that's finished compiling, it's going to write it to the ESP8266. You can see that little blue LED flashing there in the bottom left. And that's it done. Now before we plug in the ESP8266, we need to make sure this voltage regulator is uh, at the right voltage. So if I turn on my ming He there, we've got 11.6 volts on the output. Three point three three. That'll do me. So let's give this a go then. So I've set my Minghe DC to DC converter to twenty two volts and three hundred milliamps. Um, I've put this seven watt LED on here. That's so those parameters are about right for that uh, LED there. Obviously, there's some losses in the DC to DC converter and some use of that power by the ESP eighty two sixty six. But uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's turn it on. Oh, there was a flash then. Interesting. So, now that we've turned it on, we can see the ESP8266 thing showing up here. And the password is SparkFun because they wrote the script. And we've connected almost to that access point. And that's its IP address, the router, so that we need to remember that, 192.168.4.1. And if we go into my browser, there we go, 192.168.4.1 forward slash LED forward slash zero. Let's just check. So it now says the LED is now low, and indeed it is. 
So let's change this URL and try 20. And indeed, it's turned on. So I've fixed the exposure on the camera, so hopefully, as I, this gets brighter, let's go up to 60. Yeah, that definitely did seem to get brighter. And should try it all the way at a 100. Yep, yeah, that's definitely working. So I can now adjust this LED from a browser back down to 20% again. Well, I'm really pleased with that. So a big thank you again to Colin Hickey who sent me this little board and all the bits and of course to the gentleman behind Quindorian.org who created and designed the PCB. I've done things a bit differently using the Arduino IDE uh, but that's been an interesting little experiment for me too. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you can and comment down below. Thanks for watching.